my channel and welcome back to part two of our Halloween special. We have got so much planned, so I'm pretty much going to get straight into it by getting these two pumpkins ready for our pumpkin challenge. I'm going up against Adam and we are going to see who is the best pumpkin cutter. That's what, I, yes, getting tongue tied, but yes, Adam's on his computer working at the moment. Are you ready for this challenge, Adam? Yes. He sounds very enthusiastic. You're going mm. down. Oh, he reckons I'm going down. But anyway, so let's get straight into it. Let's get these cut. And we've got so many things we're going to show you in this episode on how else you can decorate your house for Halloween. And a lot of these ideas that I've come up with in this episode are very cheap, affordable, um, and you will make a big have big impact in your house for Halloween. And you could even put some of them on the outside of your house since we're a lot of people are still in lockdown. Anyway, let's do this. So I've got myself a knife. I've got myself my pumpkin. We've got two of these. And then I've got myself a little bowl. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually placing it on top, right where I want the hole to be on top. I'm just gonna trace around with a, really lightly with a black pen. Then I'm gonna go in with my knife and cut around but I'm going to cut on a slight angle so when we put the lid back on it will sit in a little groove and it won't fall through. Now the most exciting part about this is I found out there's a really easy way to scoop out your pumpkin. I've never tried this before so we're going to give it a go. So I've taken, I did put in one beater in not the two and putting it in. If you don't have one of these guys well, I suppose you, you do need one of these, but you can actually use your drill as well. So you put that inside your drill and use that. Be careful you don't have it up too high because you might end up with mash pumpkin. Anyway, let's do this and get it done. And here we go. Woo! Now that kind of looks spooky. <laughs> So as you can see, I've cut it on an angle. You can see that, so then when I want to put it back on, it'll fit, well, when you get to the right spot, like so. Oh, wow, there. So now it looks like it hasn't even been cut. Look at that. Before we go popping the beater in there, so with the top bit, I'm just gonna cut off just this messy bit with a little stringy bit, and then we're gonna keep that as is. So we'll pop that aside. Now, let's see if this ingenious idea, hope it is, works. It might help if I scoop out some of it first, I think. <laughs> Here we go. So one of these seeds, what I'm thinking, I should keep some of these so I can plant them next year. I wonder if that'll work. Anyway. We'll think about that. So that's everything I've pulled out, and there are all the seeds. Now I ended up using this spoon because this idea was okay, but it didn't kind of finish it off, and I really needed the big spoon. And this is the first one, all done. So there's a little bits in there, but that's pretty hollow. So my lid fits on just perfect. So this one is ready to carve, and then Adam wants to attempt to empty this one out himself. So I'll let him do that. Now, if you haven't seen last week's episode, I'll pop it down below. Make sure you check it out. It's got so many good ideas. We're gonna leave these pumpkins aside. We're gonna move on to our first decorating idea and stick around to the end of the video when me and Adam are gonna go up against each other. It's gonna be good. First room I'm gonna start off with is the theatre room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a 1D haunted house, but like pretty much this black silhouette of a haunted house in our window with maybe some jack-o'-lanterns um, by that side, maybe some, like a bit of a cemetery. It's gonna be really creepy. So I've got these big bits of cardboard, which are left over from our pizza, uh, pizza oven box, which if you haven't seen that episode, definitely check it out. I'll link it down below. It was a really good one. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna draw on these. Now, because I'm gonna be painting them all black, I can go, you know, I can sketch all I want on here. It won't matter. 
and then I'll cut the silhouette out and put it in the window. Look at Twyla over there. I think she wants to join in the fun. Well, you can help me, Twyla. All right, well, I'm gonna get to work and start drawing my haunted house. Ooh. I've just finished drawing in grey lead my haunted house, which is about four stories high. Lots of windows. It's really hard to see because I've used grey lead. Um, but anything that's coloured in, see around these windows, it's all coloured in, that's going to be getting cut off or cut out. And plus the silhouette of the of the haunted house will be getting cut out as well. That's the bottom level. You can barely see it. And then down here, I've got some tombstones, which are going to cut out so you'll see through that. And then we'll paint the whole thing. But first, let's go cut all this out and see how it looks. This has turned out even better than what I thought it would. Have a look at this. It looks so good. And even the symmetry looks really cool. So I'm going to go set it up in the window, see how it looks. And then we'll give it a coat of black paint. And I might do something over to the left, a bit of a maybe a pumpkin patch. We'll see how that turns out. I've started to paint all my bits and this is my jack-o'-lantern side part of the project. So now I'm just using a foam brush and just giving it all a black coat and then we can put it in the window. Well, my haunted house is looking so good. Now it's all black. Um, obviously because it's cardboard, you're going to get a little bit of this happening, but don't stress about it. From afar, it's going to look amazing. Um, now what I've decided is I've got this red tablecloth that I've cut up. I actually used part of it to paint on um, so I wouldn't dirty our bench. But now I'm going to use the rest of it to back. So then when you see it, it's going to have red windows. All these parts will be red. So I'm going to cut that up now and stick that on the back and get it all happening and we're almost ready. Woo! <laughs> All right, so this is how it's looking with the red tablecloth behind it. How awesome does that look? It doesn't look anything special from this side. As you can see, it's just got lots of sticky tape, a lot of mess. But from this side, it is looking awesome. Now, while this has been drying, I've actually been decorating our theatre room. So let me take you into the theatre room, show you what I've done, and then we'll pop this up. Absolutely love this. It looks so good and it's not just going to look good at night. It's going to look good during the day with the sun coming through those red windows. How awesome to look and those little cute pumpkins just sitting on the side of the hill. You can see the cemetery. The way I've made things crooked, it gives it a bit of depth even though it's just flat and black. But you can see that. You can get silhouettes from the internet. Just Google, um, you know, silhouette of a haunted house and hand draw it, cut it out, and you're gonna end up with something like this. How awesome does it look? And then as well with all the other decorations, Twyla's checking them out right now. It just takes it to another level. So I'll quickly sprint around the room, show you what I've set up. I've done a few homages to Freddy Krueger and uh, Jack. So quickly show you those, and then we'll move on to the next activity. So this is my Jack homage, you know, to Jack. Um, and then I've got these beautiful little coasters I picked up in Disneyland when I was there last. And this cup, look how awesome this cup is. And if I go on the other side, it's got a happy face. But I thought 
they're all looking a bit happy, so I might make him a bit angry. All right, then over here, we've got my little Freddy Krueger. Look how cool he looks. On top of a book that I've had for years, one of my Freddy Krueger books. And then I've just added a bit of this cloth and some candles and a candelabra. And then over here, all I've done, this is what we normally have here, but I've just added the black skull. And then I've done the same. I've just added my little... Um, See, hear no evil, uh, see no evil, speak no evil. Good old pumpkin heads from Mexico City, I brought those. And then over here, we have a little symmetry happening, starting. And then it goes across where I've got a big tombstone, one made out of um, foam. And I've just added a bit of black cloth down there. And then it goes up, obviously, to our beautiful, look at that. It's just turned out so well. Well, anyway, guys, that's a wrap for this one. And then now we're going to move on to something that Miss Twyla will need to help us with. You ready to help us, Twyla? You ready? It's decoration. All you're going to need is a roll of masking tape. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Ideas to decorate your house that ain't going to cost you much. It's going to cost you a roll. You probably got one of these lying around your house of masking tape. All right, well, let me grab Twyla and we're going to start with her and then I might need Adam's help with the next part. So I've traced out Adam with the tape. Now, Twyla, it's Twyla's go. I just don't quite know how she's going to go with me taping around her on the ground and if she will stay still. What do you think, baby girl? <laughs> what do you think? Ready to be taped? Let's just hope it doesn't get caught in your hair because uh, I think that might hurt. Well, there you go, another inexpensive idea you can use at your next Halloween party. Look at Twyla and look at Adam. How cute is that? Anyway, we'll move on to something else. Oh, and by the way, I even added a bit of caution tape just to make it look a bit more believable. Don't you love Twyla's ears? <laughs> decorations a rest for just a minute and we're going to make edible mummies you know like the old yep mummies okay so what you're going to need for this and it's very basic is just grab yourself some puff pastry some hot dogs you can use the little boys if you want to do them just simple but i'm going to be using um hot dogs uh they're a bit longer and you'll understand why i want to use those in a second, and as well, I've got these little eyes that you get from the lolly section, which I'll put on after they're cooked, and just some baking paper. All right, we'll come in a little bit closer, and I'll show you how to make these mummies. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut our pastry into strips. So just tiny little strips, like so, just like that. And then once we've got those all cut up, then we're going to grab our sausage, well, our hot dog, I should say, okay? And then we're just going to give our sausage, mummy sausage, some legs. So there's his legs, or her legs. And then we're just going to pop her arms, or his arms. There we go. So we've got our arms, and we've got our legs. All right. Now... We need to start wrapping our mummy. So grab your strip, maybe just cut them a bit smaller, and then wrap that around, just like you're wrapping a mummy. So there we go, we've got our first bit. Then I'm gonna wrap the body, but not the arms. All right, there we go. Then I will 
get a nice thin strip and do the arms. There we go. I'll just pinch the ends there. And then we'll get our next, next strip. Now you want to leave a bit of a gap for the eyes to sit in. Well, there you go. That there is our mummy. How good do these look? Aren't they scary? <laughs> so now all I've got to do is I've chucked the oven on 180 degrees, warmed it up, and now I'm just brushing some egg. I've just whipped some egg up with some water, and I'm just brushing that over to make them nice and brown. And that is it. We'll pop them in the oven and we'll see if these mummies turn out. Why our mummies are in the oven, I thought I would start another little project. So I've got myself garbage bags. Now just get yourself the biggest ones you can find. These are quite large. And then what you're gonna do is cut them so they're just a big strip of plastic. Uh, so pretty much here's one I've got that's cut in half. It doesn't matter how long, just as long as you've got a nice piece like this. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to take these to the bottom of my curtain. Now you can do this, there's a few ways you can do it without ruining your house, okay? These are just um, aluminium, so when I tape the sticky tape onto them, they stay quite well on there and they peel off without leaving a mark or a mess. The other way you can do it is to go above your windows and pin, get a pin and pin it into your plaster, but do it up on the top going down, you'll never see the holes there ever, unless you're on a ladder and you're looking really close. But anyway, there's a couple of ways you can do it. But that's all I'm doing is adding some six tape on there, and then I'm gonna take it all the way across. Okay, and then I'll add a few more pieces on there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and cut up different little wedges and make it look spooky. So how cool does this look? It's so effective and you could do the whole entire house. Like how cool would that look? It looks so spooky, so scary, and it's so cheap. Just a few garbage bags. Anyway, I can smell those mummies cooking. So let's go get them out of the oven and check them out. Well, I've just got them out of the oven and they are looking fantastic. A few of them have exploded out of there little mummy bands, but uh, otherwise, I mean, look at that. That's so cool. They just need some eyes now. So let me play them up and let's take a look. Now I'm just moved on. I'm gonna start painting a whole heap of twigs and branches that I got from down at the park. They're on the ground. I thought, you know what? You can come home with me and I'm gonna paint you up and I'm gonna use this for part of my centerpiece for the table I'm gonna be setting up. I'm gonna be setting up our dining table for about six people, even though we're not having anything because we're in lockdown, but it's gonna look so good. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is paint all these sticks up and let them dry, and then later on in this video, I will show you how I decorate my dining table. My sticks have dried. They look so good now they've been painted black. Check out some of these decorations I've got for the table. How cool is this skull? Look at the detail on it. How gorgeous is it? I picked this up from TK Maxx a couple of years ago. They've always got some good stuff. Um, TK Maxx is um, in Australia. Um, but yeah, I'm sure they get all these from America. But how cool are they? Anyway. I've got all this stuff over here selected to decorate the table with. So let me take you over and show you what I've picked out. Okay, so I've got some of this uh, cloth. It's like spooky kind of cloth, which I want to use as my runner. And then I've got some spider webs. Now for the glasses, I'm mixing it up. I've got um, some of these kind of ones with spiders on it. I've got these ones with skulls. And then I thought I might mix it up with a bit of height with a bit of glass. So 
for a bit of variety, it might look good. Then I've got my skulls. I've got three different types. So I'll probably put this one in the middle. This is the one that lights up. These ones don't light up, but they look absolutely gorgeous. And then I've got these candelabras. Look how nice they are. Now I'm not putting candles in these. I thought I'd just leave them blank. And then down here, I'm skipping a bit, but down here I've got these little red candle holders, which I'm gonna spread amongst the table. And then coming back here, I've got these two, I forget where I got them from, but look how gorgeous they are. But they remind me of like cauldrons. So I chucked this little fake chain on here just to give a bit of more character. And I'm just gonna place them amongst the um, table setting. Then I've got all these, how scary do these look? Um, I'm gonna prob probably put them on the placemats, but we'll see. I've got black, black, black placemats, <laughs> I'm losing my words. And then I've got these chopping little boards, these little, tiny boards again i got them from tk maxx how cool are they um and i'm going to use them as a, like a place setting uh, i've got these awesome napkin rings which i'm going to use with the brown and i thought i don't know just they kind of look a bit halloweeny these in their own little way so i like those and then obviously got my knives and forks and our candle holders so pretty much i think that's all i'm going to be using but I'll start placing it out and we'll see how we go. laying out the table i'm very happy with it now i'm about to do my spider webs but before i do that i just want to tell you a little trick with this don't ever and i've seen this happen a lot of times and it makes me go don't just go pulling it like this and then chucking it on really stretch it out i'm talking stretch it out really nice and thin and you get such better cobwebs look at that how awesome does that look so it's just a matter of just keep stretching it out until you get a really nice web and that's how you do it. All right, I'm gonna go web the table up and then I'll take you over there and show you how I've set it up. All right, so that is the table done. I've done the cobwebs and there you go. So that's the full table and how it looks. So what I've done with these, I've just kind of mixed and matched and the same as the glasses, mixed and matched the glasses. And then I've got my spider webs looking very see-through, Look how good that looks. And then I've got these little tea light candles scattered, which I'll light up in a second. And we've got all our scales out and the twigs are in between going through and then we've got our little witch cauldrons sitting there looking very spooky so there you have it that there is my halloween table set for eight
Check out this place. It's starting to look like a real witch's lair. Look at it. It's so spooky. But anyway, let's get straight into this. I'm going to show you how to make a punch. Now, I did say I was going to make a cocktail, but I've just changed my mind because I thought punches are probably a little bit more user-friendly for parties because, you know, not everyone likes a strong alcoholic drink. So, um, I thought I'd come up with a punch. Now, this punch that I'm going to show you, I don't just use it for my Halloween parties, I use it for lots of parties and there is never any left. So it's a fantastic recipe. So what I've first done is I've got myself a witch's cauldron. Look at this, how cool is this? And then what I've done is I've actually frozen two gloves with red food dye in them and they are going to go into my punch and keep it nice and cold and it will give it a very scary effect. Now, I've kept it in the glove because I don't want the water to come out as it melts and affect the taste of the punch. I think it'll turn it into like a really weak punch then and make it taste a bit flat. Anyway, so what do we need for the punch? So I've got two 1.25 bottles of lemonade. I've got two one litres of tropical punch. So any brand, just tropical punch, which is fantastic. A bottle of bubbly, any type of bubbly, um, including champagne if you can get it. But um, yeah, any sort of bubbly, preferably a sweeter one. And then we've got, I'm putting uh, tequila in mine today, but you can put vodka. Um, I've done that many times and people have loved it. Now, if you don't want it to be alcoholic, obviously just pop these two guys in there. And if you do want it to have um, less of an alcohol um, in it, then just use the champagne or the bubbly and it will taste just as good. All right, let's pour it in and get this started. In goes the lemonade. Now that that's all in, then we're gonna add in some green food dye just to make it a bit more witchier. Look at that. Now that we've got our punch made, we're going to decorate the cup we're serving it in by getting a bit of maple syrup and then adding some red food dye. Mix it around on the plate, something that's kind of big enough for you to dip your cup into. Then we're gonna grab our cup, turn it upside down, and then flip it over quickly. And the rim will start Dripping, and then what you want to do is just grab a couple of little extra dots just for bigger drip marks. And look at that. How cool does that look? Now we go in with our green punch. How good does that look? We ready to drink. Bottoms up. That is fantastic. Yum. I don't think Adam's getting any of this. Just like I promised, we finally got to the part of the video when we are going up against each other, mm -hmm. Adam and myself, and we're carving our pumpkins and you guys at home need to get down in that box and judge who did it better. Me. Anyway, and Twyla's here for a bit of moral support. Just um, our support dog. Are you gonna be our little cheerleader? Yes? All right, okay, we're gonna put a little bit of this in fast forward because otherwise you might get a little bit bored. But we actually just drew out what we, I'm not gonna show you yet, but we've drawn on here with a bit of black pen um, our faces, so we're ready to carve. We've got plenty of so different not, not size. Our, not our faces. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I could do your face. In the pumpkin. It might look scary. <laughs> no, that's terrible. Um, but we've got a few different knives. Um, we've got a scooper just in case we have to thin the walls out a little bit more. Um, and we've got a few um, deadly weapons by the looks of it. All right. Well, are you ready? Yep. Let Adam win. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. Put you down. Let's start. Should we have a timer? 
No, I'm joking. We don't need a timer. All right, I'm going okay. straight in with my eye. Look, here we go. Oh, I look like I'm from the next murder or something. Did you sharpen your knife? No. There's a tip for, for those who do this, who are, who are going to do this. Sharpen your knives. <laughs> Oh, you're getting really serious. You're even taking your Fitbit off. Do you get points on your Fitbit for uh, carving? Uh, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, tip for some is what I did. Instead of the usual hole at the top, I don't think people can see this. Put a hole at the back instead. So, so you keep your top fixed. Yeah, and th there's a few ways you can do it. So I've obviously done the top one like I showed you earlier in the video. But um, you can actually do it from underneath as well, uh, which helps with uh, aeration or something, they say. And there's a few different ways. If you want to keep your pumpkin longer, there are a few ways you can do different treatments on it to make them last longer. It, I don't have this in this video, but you can look it up on YouTube and uh, check that out. And I, do, I did my pumpkin, I did one last year, and I can pop that down below if you want to check out the pumpkin I did last year, but I'm sure this one's going to be a lot better. finished our pumpkin so it's your time to judge remember pop it down the bottom Adam or mine King Dino make sure I win remember I'm the one who does these shows for you um, <laughs> all right are we ready I'll go first okay here we go there we have it that's my Jack Len I've made him Jack of course because he's my favorite all right your turn okay. Adam this is not Jill, um, <laughs> but I can spin her around. Wait, he's going to ring her out. <laughs> Yours looks kind of goofy, but it's cute. Okay. Very good. So we've um, actually carved, as well as cutting, we've carved. So, I mean, I've only carved my little scars out and my nostrils. And Adam's... Oh. <laughs> he just lost his back. It's, anyway, a bit easier to hold it. But, as you can see... Yeah, uh, also eyebrows, pu um, eyes, pupil, iris, and teeth. Very good. Yeah. All right, so guys, make sure you vote. Down the bottom, I am linking. Get it off there. Look, he's trying mm. to cheat. Um, <laughs> make sure you go down the bottom if you're enjoying all our videos. Like, subscribe, and tell everybody about us. And on share these videos with your family and friends, especially people who've got kids in lockdown and all the rest of it. They can do all these activities and have fun. <laughs> and also, I'm going to link down the bottom all my other Halloween videos. So if you haven't seen them yet, go check them out. All right, guys. Well, it's been so much fun. I'm a... <laughs> Jesus, that was so distracting. It's been so much fun, and I'm about to take you on a full tour of the house now that it's all set up for Halloween, and we'll see you next time. Ciao, guys. Bye.